12 o'clock midnight. The next day. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And yesterday, I went to London. Uh, it was scary. It really was scary. Um, but I'm back home in Wales now. Thank God, I survived. I also saved the world. Um, you're welcome. Anyway, I couldn't really take any pictures or videos while I was at uh the time fracture experience because of the Artron energy uh, background radiation, you know, I could have caused all heaps of trouble. But I was able to get the program, which, okay, guess how much this was? Get, guess how much money was spent on this? Fifteen pounds! Fifteen pounds! That's one thing about this. <clears throat> it's so expensive. Um, there is a gift shop there. Uh, that's the first thing that you sort of walk into, is the gift shop. And everything is so expensive. <laughs> I think the least expensive things were like a fiver, but that was for a keychain. And then it sort of went up to like £110 for statue of something which you know it's it's cool but a hundred pounds most sort of figure sets were like 30 so i wouldn't really recommend getting stuff there um but even so there are still some cool stuff there that you can get for a relatively cheap price i was lucky enough to get the the vip thing so as a result of that i was also able to get this poster which i'll show here and I was able to get um, this t-shirt, which is very creased. Operation Time Fracture Unit. It's a bit of a, an understated t-shirt. Immersive everywhere in London. I didn't realise I had that. So yeah, I mean, obviously things are going to be expensive. It's London. Um, but just to warn you, it, nothing there is cheap. There also was a pin badge that uh comes with that stuff too but the, their shipment their, their order of it hadn't arrived so um the woman at the counter just gave us a little piece of paper with an email on it that we could um reach out to an email about getting our pin and they'll, and they'll send it to you in the post so time fracture it's sort of in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in a way it's like right kind of cushioned in with these other buildings um which is quite good because you can wait outside and not feel super claustrophobic um also let me sort of address um the boring stuff first covid restrictions uh what are they like in the experience because it's an interactive experience what's that gonna be like well you wait outside which is good you can sort of space out a bit but then you wait in a line. Uh, while you're in the line, they will take your temperature. Um, they also enforce masks when you go in there, obviously. And I'm pretty sure all of the actors in there, none of them are wearing masks. So I'm pretty sure that they probably get tested regularly. Um, I have like a second cousin who works in theatre and he has to get tested, I think, twice a week. So it's probably something like that. And when you get inside, <laughs> they do uh, sort of enforce social distancing where they're like they they put um black dots on the floor that you have to stand on um and stick to your bubbles so whoever you come with i went with my mom <laughs> so we kind of just stuck together but um other than that in like the first two places they don't really 
enforced social distancing whatsoever like at all all of the actors are like come closer come closer and you're like <laughs> and um you're in rooms with random strangers you know it it's um hard to stick to and abide by social distancing um so like they try but it's not really enough and I wouldn't worry too much because like I say the actors I'm sure get tested regularly and, and they take your temperature before you go in um so if anyone was abnormal they'd probably be like hey um sorry but um either way it was a fun experience anyway yeah also tickets were a lot cheaper because I was one of the first people to go um, I think because apparently they're gonna like polish their act up a bit, you know, as they go further into it. Um, so it's kind of cool though in a way because I get to experience it for the first time and sort of give feedback. <laughs> so listen up, BBC. You walk in, you're sort of escorted by units. There were literally people dressed up in unit outfits outside. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, it was it was really cool. So I walked in and immediately you're met with this guy called Dr Sullivan and uh, you're sort of stood in this hallway also right if you have bags because you can buy things before you go in because as soon as you go in there's the gift shop they say that you can that you can leave your bags with these people behind these counters in these like lockers right you have to pay two pounds per locker two pounds you have to pay money to put your bags down somewhere. I don't know if I'm just really cheap or... So I was like, like, don't worry mum, like, I'll just carry my bag, it's no big deal. So I just carried my bag throughout it and it was fine. So don't bother. Um, like, if you're given the VIP thing, um, they give you your stuff straight away. I think you can probably claim it at the end, but we just got ours straight away. So you might want to sort of pay so you're hands-free for the whole time but honestly it doesn't make much of a difference at all you're not really that hands-on with everything a bit but not much that a bag is gonna disrupt your thing if you don't have anything with you and you're worried that the gift shop will be busy at the end and so you want to buy something as soon as you go in don't worry the gift shop was not busy at all by the end because at the end you go back to the lab that you go to um, sort of at the start and you get to um, take pictures with things around it um, which is cool and so a lot of people sort of stay in that area and on your way out you can take a few pictures too because there's some cool little easter eggs and just stuff there's stuff everywhere that makes any Doctor Who fan go like oh fuck oh my god the details the details it's great it's great um <laughs> So I wouldn't worry, um, if you want to buy something, buy it at the end. You're with Dr Sullivan in this corridor, and you're sort of in there with a, probably a group of like 15 people, uh, 15, 20 people, and he just introduces it to you, he's like, the doctor's brought you here, and everyone's like, has she? I don't remember this, <laughs> I paid for this. Actually, okay, no wait, the doctor did bring me, sorry, yeah. Uh, <laughs> There is some sort of audience participation. My mum and I were stood at the front, uh, so he was like, what's your name? And I was like, uh, <laughs> Safi, um, because I have a weird name, I had to repeat it, obviously, that happens every time. But, you know, it's not his fault. And um, he was like, okay, Safi, uh, do you know what Artron uh, energy is? Do you know what it is? And I was like, yes, but uh, he took me off guard, so I was like, I probably couldn't explain it. And he was like, okay, I'll explain it and you tell me if I'm right. I'm like, okay. So then um, there was also rooms sort of scattered around us. Uh, like one there, one there, one there, one there. And he would tell certain members of the audience, hey, go in there and um, do this. So I, I had to go in one of the rooms and check his emails. Dr. Sullivan, we needed to talk. <laughs> I'm joking. Basically, the email said about Sergeant Dudley, who had passed away um, from going into the time of fracture. He died. Sergeant Dudley 
gone bye byes he's dead okay and then when you come out of the rooms he'll be like oh what did you learn and everything and and um then he'll bring you into the next room the next room is just sort of a big room that they they turn it sort of pitch black and there are these screens up on the wall and guess who who's on the screens only kate lethbridge stewart uh so yeah she's there sort of saying that the world's in peril shit's going down and please can you help us so that's basically the whole story i feel like i would say it was spoilers but um th i mean there's not really much more to say other than <laughs> the world's in peril and you need to help also i just read online that there's going to be a torchwood storyline at some point in the future which is sick so I definitely want to go back <laughs> at some point if I can to experience that. So after that you go into the lab and the lab is sick because it looks like um, sort of the inside of the TARDIS with the console right in the middle and around it there's computers and then at the back the other end is the two time fractures, time fracture entrances, right? So those are like the gateways into time and it's very dangerous and you could die if you go in there <laughs> so i don't know why i laughed then <laughs> um okay you sort of stood there and there's another guy uh, explaining things to you and there are just people rushing about and it's great because it looks like you know there's shit going on there's always stuff going on around you and it really does immerse you because I went with my mum and my mum is not a very big Doctor Who fan. She used to be into it. I mean, why do you think I'm into it? She literally used to watch it with me back, you know, during the Christopher Eccleston days, right? And David Tennant. And she tells me now that she doesn't like it. She used to. She's hiding her love for it. I, well, I thought it would take me out of it a bit if I went with someone who wasn't super into Doctor Who because you're a bit like, are you enjoying this? Like, But um, my mum was a good sport anyway. She just sort of went with it and I think she enjoyed it. I think it would be cooler if you went with someone who really liked Doctor Who because then you could like actually point things out to them and be like, hey, look at that. But even then, because you're surrounded by so many other Doctor Who fans, it always feels exciting and it always feels like you're a part of something and you're not missing out because everyone else is reacting to it the same way you are and because sometimes you can overhear people saying like oh my god did you see that or that and you're like oh my god yeah <laughs> it's just nice being in such an environment like that and and it was really nice because i had been very frustrated with the doctor who fandom recently um as some of you might already know but being in that environment with all those people, it felt nice. Like, there was nobody who was being annoying or anything. It was all just very nice and relaxed. I mean, I say relaxed. <laughs> it was busy and there was a lot going on all the time. Oh my god, the actors. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hey, friends. Like, hello, hi. It was, it was wonderful. So after that we were taken to the other side to have a look at the two sort of fractures in time and um, he explained about Sergeant Dudley, you know, um, who went in there and died and um, they were looking for a couple of volunteers to go in and yeah it's really dangerous and everything. There's sort of some audience interaction there too, um, they do talk a lot and then they sort of test you afterwards just so you're listening but for someone like me whose brain lags a lot, <laughs> to say the least. I find it very hard to like listen and understand what someone's saying when they're just saying it. Like I find it hard to understand something if someone's just telling me. I need. To, I, I think I'm more of a visual learner, which is okay because there's visual aids everywhere. Like this is the crack and you're like, that is the crack, yes. But when they're telling you actual information, sometimes I'm a bit like... So be warned, um, they might put you on the spot a little bit, but it's fun anyway, it's all in good fun, and they're not going to make fun of you if you don't know. I mean, they might joke around a bit, because 
after we've sort of been spoken to there, this other guy, Dr. Shaw, I believe his name was, um, took us into this other room and he counted our fingers, uh, which is always helpful. <laughs> um, and he was very nice, actually. He was also from Cardiff, which was pretty sick, but he was from Splot. Um, please don't make fun of him for being from Splot, but he was from Splot, so. Splot. I'm joking. <clears throat> uh, but he was very nice, and then he took us into another room and explained a bit what was going on. Uh, I I'll always be like, explained a bit, I won't go into detail. Um, not just because of spoilers, but also because I can't remember. <laughs> like I say, my brain lags, and I sometimes the information doesn't really go in if someone's just telling me something. Basically, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. And he sort of made fun of us a little bit because he was like, so do you know what this is? Or do you know what I'm on about? And we'll just be a bit silent. And he'd be like, I see why the doctor chose you. <laughs> and we were like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was all in good fun. And he was a nice guy. So then uh, we went out of there. We could check around on the different computers and it was sort of like new things up everywhere every now and then there would be a new thing every now and then as well you'd have to hold on to something metal because there was a bit of a, a like a bit of a quake a bit of a, a time f fracture fragment thing um and you'd have to hold on for dear life and at certain times as well you would hear the doctor which was really cool there would sort of be like a voice out of nowhere and you'd be like bruh what's going on like everything would pause and there would be a voice as soon as the voice is over everyone's back to doing all the other things the actors were phenomenal i gotta say because they've got to really improvise as well because they're interacting with you it's not just about performing it's about interacting and i thought it was it was brilliant i thought they were all really really good at what they were doing hello friends i will say i will say one thing that i might complain about there was there was a Trump tangerine joke. There was a there was a there was a Donald Trump tangerine joke in twenty twenty one. Um Thank God it only lasted for like a couple seconds, but <laughs> because of all this time fracture shit going on in, in the world, right? There's things going on there's dinosaurs in london you know the drill but the um president had turned into a tangerine hilarious i know i know i couldn't stop laughing but to be honest that's as bad as it gets i gotta say that w that's like the only thing i could really complain about at all so it's all right i would say that that first part sort of dragged the most uh being in that lab it was a bit like, okay, like what are, what are we doing now? But actors would sort of come up and approach you and, and make sure that you are doing something. You know, if they saw you sort of standing there, like they'd be like, hey, um, so I'm this person. And <laughs> hello, friends, um, I'm this person. <laughs> Can you please do this thing for me, please? And you're like, fuck, what does she want me to do? <laughs> but it's all right. It was quite cool because Dr. Sullivan called a few people to the centre of the lab. He called me? He called me? He was like, can I have this person, uh, this person, and Safi and Kate. Kate being my mum. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so we walked into the centre, which was really cool, because we were like right by the console, and I was like, hello? <laughs> hello, console? Um, such a fucking nerd. <laughs> um, so we were there, and Dr. Sullivan came up, he was, and he was asking us random questions. Our first question was, who painted the Mona Lisa? And I'm something of an artist myself. Uh, so I was like, oh, Leonardo uh, da Vinci. It took me so much effort to not say DiCaprio. I don't know what was going on. I was like, Leonardo da Vinci. And he was like, good, good. Um... Uh, and he asked another question, and he was kind of looking at the kids, because 
there was me and my mum, a couple, and then two kids. And he sort of looked at the kids, I guess, to give them a fair chance because they're kids. Um, and the kids got the question right. And then, <laughs> and then Dr. Sullivan said to the couple who hadn't answered um, either of the questions, you stay here. Okay, Safi and Kate and, and the kids, <laughs> you're going into the time fracture. <laughs> and it was so funny because he just sort of like told the other, told the couple to just fuck off basically. And then me and my mom and these kids had to go into the time fracture. I mean, we could have died. So, I mean, um, but it was great. So we were the first people to go in there. I mean, everyone goes in there anyway, um, but we were just like the first, everyone else just follows along right so it was quite cool in a way <laughs> i love getting paid for that oh man i think dr sullivan sort of liked me i, I, I think he was a fan of the channel <laughs> i'm joking hey dr sullivan and it's really cool but also sort of confusing after that because you're going into this time factor which is sick but um there's mirrors and so you have to sort of navigate where you're going and straight ahead there was a mirror and i wouldn't i would have just walked straight into it if my mum hadn't like gone the other way i was like what's going on <laughs> but it looked really cool and then you go into the marketplace i think it was the marketplace from the rings of akaton there were also market stalls there from um like gridlocked and there was a pig man there and it was really cool and as soon as we went there there was a woman there and oh my god she was dressed up in um john pertwee's green outfit which was so cool a lot of the actors were wearing um certain doctor costumes which was amazing and they would always quote things from the episodes it, it was really really a cool experience i think if if you are a nerd but anyway, um, so this woman spoke to us for a bit, showed us around a bit, uh, told us to do some things, and it was fun. So yeah, there was Pigman there, who ended up getting shot and killed in front of my eyes. It was so funny. It wasn't funny. But like, he was having a fight with this assassin. And she wasn't going to pay him because she was a bit of a dickhead, to be honest. And he's like, oh, excuse me, what are you doing? And uh, she just fucking shot him. And he just was like, and then he just laid on his desk like that. I was like, what? <laughs> and then everyone immediately then just like walked away because there was another sort of thing going on over there now. And I just kept looking back, like, are you okay? What's, what's going on? Pig man. Because <laughs> he seemed really nice. But there was a lot of cool things going on there. There was the Kablam man. The Kablam man. My mum really liked him. She didn't know where he was from, but she was like, oh, I like him. Oh. He's, he's kind of cool. He's kind of neat. There was a tent with one of the sisters of Khan in there. And she was cool. There was a point though, uh, like we sat in her tent, right? And she was basically explaining some more information to us. When we went out then, there was some other people standing outside waiting to go in. And she was like, okay, friends, can you please explain to our other friends here uh, what um, I just told you? And I was like, And then I was I was so happy that these other people went in with us. So I just looked at them and luckily they actually have brain cells and so they remembered. <laughs> and this girl was explaining um, everything to the other people, to the other friends. Guess who was there also? Brian the Ood. Fucking Brian the Ood was there. I, yeah. I was starstruck. Me and my mum were staring at him like, Brian, because 
all of the prosthetics were so well done. I made a bit of a boo-boo though. At one point, I I looked over and I was like, a Sontaran? They, there's a Sontaran here, that's so cool. Like, dude, what? There's a Sontaran? Anyway, dude turns around and I realise he's not a Sontaran, he's, he's just a man. He's just a man. He's just a man that went there who, who looks just like a Sontaran. He was just, his head, it looked just like a Sontaran. Like, I'm sorry. I'm, I felt so bad. I was staring at him like, Sontaran? And then he turned around and I was like, oh, he's not, he's, he's not a Sontaran, is he? I'm sorry, but it was an honest mistake. It really was. Anyway, there was also a weird thing going on with the sister of Khan, who she she handed me some, some pebbles. I swear, everyone just kept interacting with me, which was sick, actually. I kept getting chosen for things, which was exciting. I don't know why they liked me. I think I was just always there at the right time. She gave me some pebbles. And she was like, put in your hopes and dreams and destinies into this, um, lake thing of time. And she was doing these, like, movements, like, whoo, whoo, which you had to, um, copy. It was, it was intense. I felt like I was part of a cult. Uh, and then I put my dreams and my, my hopes and my destinies in there when she told me to. And it, and it, and it was, and it was, it was a fun little thing. And then, oh shit, there was a Cyberman. <laughs> there were so many kids who were just really scared and they started crying and it made me laugh. I'm sorry, it was funny. I felt bad, but it, it was funny. So then we had to run into this other place. And guess where we ran to? Only the bloody Zagit Zagu bar. <laughs> Dude, it was, it was so cool. Because that was sort of then, like, the interval. Um, it was a place where you just sat down and you could have a drink if you wanted to. Water was free, so I had water. They were selling Coke for bloody five pounds a can. Five pounds for a can of Coke. Sorry, no. So, it's very expensive there, like I said. My mum got gin and tonic, right? Nine pound fifty for a glass of gin and tonic. Nah, nah. She enjoyed it though, so it's fine. She said that that was her favourite part, um, because you just got to chill out in a bar. And there was a uh, Silurian singing, and she was so good. She was so good. It was amazing. It really was. That was actually a really fun part, because we just got to chill, because I feel like the, the only part that dragged was when we were in that lab at the start. After that, everything seemed to sort of flow a lot better because there's everything going on all the time. It was nice to have that interval, that place where you could just sit down and chill for a bit because it felt like you didn't have to have your guard up all the time. Like, oh, what's going on over there? What's going on over here? It's, it's just sort of like, hey, I'm chilling. You know, the actors won't really come up to you until um, a little bit after. Sometimes during a little bit because they'll just be like, oh, you know. After a little while, maybe about 20 minutes, I don't, I'm not sure, it, I don't really know, I don't know how long we spent in there. We spent kind of longer than some people, and, and eventually we went then, and we went to Gallifrey, bro what? But on our way there, there was the painting from the day of the doctor, and a little bench to sit down and look at it, and we were just stood there like, this is cool, and like on the speakers you could hear... Uh, when Tom Baker, the curator, is uh, talking to Matt Smith. It was so cool. It was really cool. But then this one was like, hey, what are you doing? We've we got to go. I was like, oh, oh shit, sorry. I was, I was just admiring this, this, this painting. Anyway, then we went on Gallifrey. And it was really cool because we got to see a Rassilon, Um And basically they were just arguing about what they should do. Um, I feel like 
no matter what you do, it's always going to be a good ending. There's never going to be, like, the bad ending, I don't think. That would be really funny, though. Imagine you go and they're like, oh, Planet's dead now. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and it was really cool. I won't say too much about it. But there's Rassel on, and at the end, basically, you end up saving the world. So while it's being, you're sort of, like, saving it and everything, there's different doctors um, who pop up on screens around it a few people get exterminated it's fine just don't, don't even worry about it but yeah so there's like screens that pop up and different doctors are saying things and it's really cool jo uh, joe martin as well pops up and with the whole um captain jack you know john barrowman thing you know they had to take out his part in it it was a little gutting obviously because it's like but uh, you know i understand why they did it and and um I won't go into detail about that whole situation. I was a bit worried in a way that it would take a big part out of the experience for me, but it really didn't. I still think it was really great regardless, and I don't think he would have had really a major part in it anyway. I think it would have just been another thing to pop up on the screen for like a minute and that would be it. And the whole experience is like two and a half hours. It's a lengthy experience, but because there's always stuff going on around you, it really doesn't feel like a super long time and because there's that interval as well it just it feels nice it's it's got a good pace to it like I said it dragged a bit at the start but that was it it was really sort of the perfect amount of time I think it ended up being but it was really emotional at the end in a way like I found it a bit emotional <laughs> because the doctor was like thank you so much you know you, you're you're such a hero and and it, and it just made me feel like <laughs> thank you um it was just really nice, a really wholesome ending, really, really enjoyed that. And then as soon as, as that it, it was over, we could then sort of just leave and uh, take pictures um, back at the start in that first little lab. And there was now a TARDIS there, which was really cool. So you could take pictures in front of it. Obviously, I did. <laughs> and obviously, I took a picture in front of the console thing in the middle. Um, and then on your way out as well, there was like graffiti in places. I took a picture in front of that. Because um, <laughs> there was like just little things like Hello Sweetie, Dr. Donna, etc. Which was really cool. I took, I even took a picture in front of this door, which I thought looked cool. You know, I, it was just me in front of a bunch of crap. But it was so cool. And then you were led then back into the... Diff oh my god, stop it. Back into the gift shop. Uh, where you, like I said, it wasn't very busy. Uh, we bought this just, like, very quickly, actually. It didn't take long at all. Then we were just out, and that was that. Obviously, going to London, it's quite expensive, you know, without accounting for the experience itself. It, you know, um, you know, taxiing around or taking the tube, etc. It's expensive, because we drove there, and then my mum and I took taxis around, um, my stepdad and my sister also came, but they didn't go to the experience uh, with me. They were just doing their own thing. They went on the tube. There's cost-efficient ways of doing it, but it's always going to be quite expensive, which is probably the only real downer to it. I would say, though, it's 100% worth it. It's, it's so worth it. If you're a big Doctor Who fan, even if you're just a casual Doctor Who fan who's just in the area, um, but I would say even if you're a really big fan and, and you're worried because you live quite far away, I live in Wales, um, and even that, you know, Wales isn't super far, but it's still expensive to get there. I would say it's still really worth it for the experience that you get. And even if you're not able to go with someone else who really likes Doctor Who, you know, it was a bit gutting that I couldn't, but it's still nice no matter what. I think even if you went with someone who wasn't a big Doctor Who fan, doesn't really know much about it, they'll still enjoy it still because my mum did she thought it was cool <laughs> still um she said that she finds doctor who fans a little bit sad um and i was like none taken <laughs> you know it's not really my mum's thing but she enjoyed the bar <laughs> and, and i think that you know uh, people will enjoy it even if they're not super big doctor who fans so i wouldn't worry if you're having to go with someone who isn't the biggest fan doesn't really know much about it. I think they'll still have a good time and you can still try to convince them to, to take you. 
it's it is a hundred percent worth it i'd say it's it's a really fun cool experience and um i can't recommend it enough to be honest i'd be excited to see what it's like in a few months you know because if they are actually improving it like my mum said they would because the tickets like i say were cheaper for me and my mum because um we were some of the first people to see it um so i'd be interested in seeing what they add later on or change later on i would totally go again <laughs> i totally would it's just so fun and and i think your experience is always going to differ you're always going to um have a different experience if you if you go again or, or you know it's always going to change because they're interacting with you it's not like you're watching a film again you're not you're not watching an, a theater performance again you're involved in it so it's always going to be different they might take you to a different room or you know you'll just talk to people in a different way like it'll just it's always going to be different and if you go with different people again you know it's, it's, it's just always going to change depending on who you go with and who you are it just always will be a different experience and i think that's so cool and it's really worth it there's so many details to like you know everywhere you look there's a doctor who reference <laughs> so that's my review i think it was fantastic i'd probably give it like a 9 out of 10 uh just because i feel like a 10 out of 10 it was just very expensive um if it was a bit cheaper i'd say maybe like a 10 but i hope you enjoyed my review anyway this is a bit lengthy but there was just a lot to unpack and i really hope you enjoyed it and i really hope that you are able to go because it's totally worth it and um if you went let me know how it was and if you're going let me know because um that's really cool <laughs> and i hope you enjoy it um as much as i did and uh hope you have a wonderful day goodbye like i found it a bit emotional <laughs> because the doctor was like thank you so much <coughs> oh pardon me why i swear what is what is this doing here my sister I'm so annoyed anyway dr sudley doc